Actually, uh, we're going live. You never quite know when the magical moment is. It's you. But, uh, Lovely to see you here. Um, you're going to want to skip forward me. about uh, five minutes or so from the quiz starts. Uh, unless you want to hear us, uh, our pre-ramble. I mean, who wouldn't, to be honest? I mean, who I definitely would love to hear it. Um, okay, I'm posting the link, so um, keep an eye out for that. Keep an eye- yeah, if you're watching, keep an eye out for the link that Jack's about to post so that you can watch <laughs> well, it. <laughs> well, we already have 100 viewers. That's amazing. <laughs> All the subscribers of Hill Beat are actually here. That's crazy. Um, you posted it? Have you posted it properly or have you posted Facebook... it as you to the page? <laughs> my Facebook's still loading. It's taking a long, long time. Mine's a bit slow as well. It must be a south thing. I think so. Oh, you're quite it's far north. Storm, storm raging. I mean, yeah. I'm not Cornwall. You're effectively like two time zones over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're not wrong. It gets dark like two hours later here, I think. Mm, that's what I heard. <clears throat> so okay, you come on, Jack. Come I'm, on, on, Jack. I'm on the Hillbeat SSC page. I'm almost there. And I'm, I'm logged in as the right person. I'm not logged in as my personal account, which is always great to see. Oops. Or the Vern Bar Quiz now at. Oh, hang on. No, we like the Vern Bar Quiz! Exclamation mark. Join us. Now, uh, there we go. That's good. Brilliant, perfect. Oh, I posted it. He'll be able to see uh, Facebook page, which is always great. And I'll now share it into Peter's Playtime, as it is tradition at this point. It's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, as always, we have a picture. Uh, it's not a superstar in front of the show the side of the screen whose face yeah. has been slightly distorted. Um, can you work out who that is? Who that person is? I didn't actually um, make a guess before we started this time. No, oh, well, you, you can make a guess before we reveal, I guess. <laughs> that's true, actually. I was, I was only inadvertently give it away. Mm, that's true. Wait, did I share it to be this great time? Or was I, I don't just know, you that? I don't think I did. I think I was talking too much. I don't think you did. That's fine. I'll do it now. Because obviously everyone that... Oh, if, if you see it be this great time, that means obviously you're going to join. Oh, you need to also comment in the live chat so that everyone else can comment. Oh yeah, is it still broken? Is it still broken like that? I think that's just something that happens. But it, I think all the other times you've just ha- you just you've just put hello anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do like putting hello. Just you know, ease things in. Uh, post. All right, put it in with the on. Brilliant news. Oh, this is a bit weird. Hello. Oh, I'm in the wrong. See if you're joining us for the first time, or have never joined us before. But that's the same. Or you're joining us after a while, or you've come back after every, every week. If you're watching us on demand, if you're watching us live, if you're watching us 20 seconds after this goes out, because there's a 20 second delay. So it's very impressive <laughs> if, you're watching, if you're watching it live, unless you're me and Jack. I, I'd be very impressed. I'd be slightly like concerned as well, Hugo. Is that about you? Um, Have you not seen the, the, the screen with no camera on in, the, in this Zoom call? <laughs> that's really terrifying. Please don't say that. How have someone got their hands on that link? That link is confidential. It's only known to two people in this world. Mm. I, I know it. I know it by heart. That link. <laughs> um, um, HTTPS colon slash no, Durham no. University dot Zoom dot US slash J slash nine seven. F- <laughs> only joking. We'll that. get flooded. We'll get flooded. We'll get we'll get stream attacked. Can you comment in the chat, please, Jack? I'm going. No, no, I'm still doing other things. Oh, blimey. I know. I've got one busy. I've got loads of things to do these days. We've got uh, got some fun rounds for you today. Oh, no. What have you done? I'm hearing things. I don't know. Oh, no, it's actually. No, when I'm I'm looking at the bar quiz to um, to say hello, and I I hear the playback, and it's very stressful. Hello. Hello. Business. Hello. There we go. Hello has been oh, made. Oh, perfect. I finally, yeah. I can chat publicly. So, if you'd um, like to send us a little message, um, you didn't feel free to post that and the thing. We'll we'll um we'll see it as you post it, but you won't see our reaction until twenty seconds afterwards or so. <laughs> Honestly, this delay. What a nightmare. Uh, Is there a delay? I never actually. Oh no, the twenty second delay. Hey, do you want yeah, to do the, not, not, do you want to do the one two three game, Jack? No, because I think we're quite good at today. Today, I think we're okay, quite one, in sync. One, two, three, go. 
go. It's a great way to test um, latency. <laughs> it's a tried and tested method. Is that, you know right. what the delay is between me and Jack. Over to you, Jack. Yeah. Hello. Uh, we'll get started in a little while. I uh, hope you're enjoying your Thursday evening. I hope you've had a good food, potentially, in the last couple of hours. Um, and that you're settling down for some five rounds of great times. What have we got today, Hugo? We've got a we've links got, round. We've got a links round. We've got a wipeout round. We've got a specialist round on Nerf guns and Nerf in general. Whew, what a time. And we've got two other rounds Maybe. as well. See, for the, for the BDI amongst you, um, I did refer to it as a Nerf round, not a Nerf gun round. So uh, get, giving Hugo mm. the ability to... Be a bit broader about it. Uh, the Nerf round was yeah. chosen by uh, the, the team that won best team name last week. So if you... If you win best team name this week, then you can pick a, a, a round for next round, for next week. Anyway, Jack, uh, let's get on with it. Um, who is this okay. person on screen, do you reckon? Uh, let's have a look. Um, oh, so difficult. I'm going to go with... I don't know. Is it Jackie Weaver? Jackie Weaver? No. A different, a different Jackie. No way. Oh, is it, Jack, is it Jacqueline Wilson? It's Jacqueline Wilson, friend of the oh, show. Oh. Superstar and friend of the show, Jacqueline Wilson. There we go. There we go. And you got, so, I got Jackie vibes from it. Mm, yeah, I don't blame you. So first up, we of course have um, the links round. Jack, how does the links round work? So if you go the links round works like this. So we're going to show you nine seemingly general knowledge questions. Um, and then the 10th question, what's the link? It's because unbeknownst to me until about a second ago, there were there actually something there's a common topic that links the previous nine answers together so be on the lookout for that and it might this is quite a difficult link so it might be able to help you with some of the earlier questions if you guess the link um so yeah without further ado let's get straight into it uh yep so in the world of fishing what does a lure act as in the world of fishing what does a lure act as hmm. what could um, it be so this these are all um i'm actually i want to give it do you give a hint in terms of what no, kind of no, 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 I, no links, I think. No. Now I, I know it. what the link is, it's not too difficult. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. All right, that's fine. Um, I'm just going to... I'm just sharing it into the... I'm sharing the post into Freshers 2020 as well, because... Well, if you're joining us later, you've only missed... It's just a, it's just a quiz. Write down your answers. Um, we'll go through the answers after we've done all the questions. And then you add up your score and you could win a mystery <clears throat> prize. I'm not going to lie, the mystery prize today, we might have peaked. Have we? Oh, I'm very excited. I, I think I might know what it is. Uh, and I'm very excited. So question number two. Question number two. What is the first name of the actor notable for starring as Princess Aurora in the Maleficent film series and Alice Daynard in J.J. Abrams' 2011 film Super 8? What is the I'm first name of the actor? Films. Sorry? As you work. Sorry, read it again. Oh. What is the first name of the actor notable for starring as Prince Aurora in the Maleficent film series and Alice Daynard in J.J. Abrams' 2011 film, Super 8? I was going to say, um, I've not seen either of these films, so I wouldn't know this. Oh, you haven't. I've have somehow seen all of the movies mentioned here. And, uh, they, yeah, Maleficent's but, good. Would recommend. You know, maybe just, if you can't come up with anything else, you could guess um, the name of a, a, a woman, a woman's name. Yes, that's that's always a good place to start. It's got as an actor. Right, question number three. Question number three. What is the name for the triangle-shaped piece of equipment used to align balls in Q Sports? What is a name for the triangle-shaped piece of equipment used to align balls in Q Sports? And if for you this has more than one thing that it's called, we're after the one that fits the link. Yep. Uh, And also the, uh, the answer has not the, the word the answer is is not in the question anywhere so if you're thinking Handy. it's one it won't be that um what? yeah sorry okay okay got you got you <laughs> uh yeah question number four. Oh, that thing i was picturing a completely different thing <laughs> triangle face is triangle shape piece triangle of equipment. thing uh, question number four. Question number four. Fill in the gap. Olympus blanks the highest mountain on Mars at 21,287 metres. That is very high, isn't it? Um, awesome. <laughs> it's incredibly high. 
Also, a uh, bit of a you know intermission. Look at that, Durham in the summer. He'll be in the summer. It's a, a site we nice, haven't seen it? for quite a while. Nice picture of Thorpe there in the background. Yeah. I wonder when this was taken. Probably a couple of years ago. I'd wager. Um, so just to clarify with this, it's the name, it's Olympus and then something ending in S. But we don't want the we don't want the S, we want all the other letters of the second word. Yep. That would be amazing. Please, if you could do that, that'd be brilliant. Thanks. That'd so be much. great. Thanks. Honestly, uh, thank you. That'd be so kind. Question number five. Question number five. Laminated, toughened, and heat strengthened are all major witch building material. <laughs> Laminated, toughened, and heat strengthened are all major types of witch building material. I bet you didn't think you'd get a building question. Uh, but here we are. I was expecting it. Yes, you were. That's Always awesome. going to have a building question in the Van Bar quiz. You've got to have one, you know, one in there somewhere. Um, Absolutely. We all need to know our building materials. This is a good way to learn. Um, question number six. Question number six. Which, <laughs> which imperial dynasty of China was responsible for a number of scientific advancements, including the invention of paper, and saw the creation of the Silk Road? Which imperial dynasty of China was responsible for a number of scientific advancements, including the invention of paper, and saw the creation of the Silk Road? And I'm talking about the trading network, not the black market site. Oh, uh, nice. Um, this one it might be a bit hard, uh, but yes. just name an imperial dynasty of China and then think why, what link might fit one of them, you know? Yep. So, yeah, this is one of those ones where if you get the link, you can maybe come back to this one and kind of piece it together that way. Uh, or you might just be very good at your imperial dynasties of China as well, equally, in which case, very impressive. Uh, yeah. Right. So, yeah, don't, don't worry too much about that if you can't get it at the moment. Question number Question seven. Number seven. Fill in the gap. Masala blank, a type of tea brewed with milk and a number of herbs and spices. Fill in the gap. Masala blank, a type of tea brewed with milk and a number of herbs and spices. Classic question. If you're joining us late, uh, we will uh, we will nip through the questions you missed um, in a in a minute. Yep. Don't you worry. Um, what a time. Um, you may nice. notice this font uh, we've got here is Calibri Body. That's because oh, Jack yeah. sent me the quiz in the <laughs> wonderful font Calibri Body. I meant to change it. I thought I did. But clearly also, not. I really like how you sent it to me with all the text right at the top of the screen. Yeah, that's, that's how I format it. Oh, sorry. Normally, normally, I put a picture below, but I realise in this kind of question, the picture would just be the answer. So, um, that's I true. Can do that first yeah. round. All right. Question number uh, the next one, eight. I guess. Question number eight. Uh, where, what is the first word of the road in Durham where Wiffwaff and Leonard's Coffee House are located? It's also the name of a sitcom starring Robert Webb and David Mitchell. What is the first word of the road in Durham where Wiffwaff and Leonard's Coffee House are located? It's also the name of a sitcom starring Robert Webb and David Mitchell. So if you know your sitcoms, and you know your Durham geography. This is a perfect it's, question for you. Boy, 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 is this the question for you. You just hit the, the, the jackpot. You really have. So enjoy, is all I can say here. Um, have you got any idea what the link is, Jack? Um, potentially, I might have a slight idea. It does help um, you run around, I guess. Potentially, that, that does help. But not necessarily, so I might have forgotten. Uh, so, question number nine. Question number nine. Fill in the gap. Blank time. An American television network notable for programs such as Homeland and Dexter. Fill in the gap. Blank time. An American television network notable for programs such as Homeland and Dexter. Mm. Um, dinner time. Think? Potentially dinner time. Uh, could be lunch time. Lunch time. That's the one. Breakfast, breakfast time. time. Mm. Yeah, there's there's just so many things that could fit there, but hopefully you know the right one. Um, <laughs> I enjoyed that. I don't know about you. Yeah, no, I, I very much enjoyed that. Um, remember, there's a there's a link between all of them. It's a bit of a hard one today. Yep. But not. Oh, you know. I think it's not. I think it's hard to notice. It's not like. I don't think it requires. Hmm, I'm not sure. Like, if you get, if you get it, I think everyone will, would be able to recognise the link if yeah. if told it. Is it too it's, much? It's, it's, not, to it's say. not like 
they're all uh, fruits that have appeared in the Star Wars <laughs> films or something. What about if you try, if you're, if you're struggling with a link, try, you know, saying that loud. Oh. Oh, there's a little hint for those, for our, our audio listeners there. Yeah. Um, and question number 10. Question number 10, what is the link? So what is this link that we've been talking about? What connects those previous nine answers together? I'd like to know. I'm sure you'd like to know. Hopefully you do know. It's all great. I love the use of the exclamation mark and the question mark. I mean, what is the link at the end of the day, Hugo? Sort of a high energy question asking we like to see in the Exactly, exactly. Okay, good stuff. Well, that's the uh, round one. I guess it's probably a good idea to go back through it. Let's go back through these answers. So question number one. Uh, what does allure act as in fishing? What does allure act allure act as in fishing? Yeah. Question number two: What was the first name of the actor who has played Princess Aurora in Maleficent and Alice Daynard in Super Eight? Question number three: What was the name for the triangle-shaped piece of equipment used to align balls in a Q sport in Q sports? Question number five: Olympus blank, and then with an S at the end, the highest mountain. On Mars, what is the what, what is the missing letters there? Question number five: um, laminated, toughened, and heat strengthened are all major types of which building material? Question number five: which imperial dynasty of China was responsible for a, a number of scientific advancements, including the invention of paper, and saw the creation of the Silk Road? So, name a Chinese dynasty. Fill in the gap: masala blank, a type of tea. Masala blank. Question number eight: What is the first name of the of the road in Durham where Whiff Waff and Leonard's are? And also, is the name of a sitcom with Robert Webb and David Mitchell? Um, question uh, number nine: Fill in the blank. Blank time in American television network that has Homeland and Dexter. And as of course, question number ten: What's the link? What's the link that links those nine answers together? Well done. If you got through that, that was uh, our first round out of the way. Four rounds to go. First of all, here which, we go. Is round two. Is this or that or that? <laughs> it's a classic Annabelle round, Annabelle Hay round. Is this or that or that? We're going to show you a word, a word, a bit of an unusual word. And um, uh, we're going to give you three options for the definition. And we want you to tell us what the definition is. So just it's just multiple choice, match up the definition to the word. So question number one. Hobbledy high, hobbledy high. Does hobbledy high mean is it a spring dance performed in County Mayo, Ireland? Is it an awkward or clumsy youth, or is it to fall in a ditch? Do you dance a hobbledy high in County Mayo, Mayo Island? Do you uh, occasionally see hobbledy highs in the youth centre, and when they're a bit awkward, or or do you hobbledy high into a ditch if you're being a bit too clumsy? Hobbledy high. What a word. Hobbledy I'm so hoy. glad that I've been introduced to it now. Me too. I'm going to start using it for all three of those, I think. Um, so there you go. Give that one some thought. Uh, if you know it, put it down. Um, here we go. And onwards with question number two, I suppose. Whip jab. No, no comment. <gasps> Excuse me? No. Uh, Steady. Uh, which Jack, uh, is it A, a beggar who is pretending to have been shipwrecked? Is it B, a doctor who is pretending to be deaf? Or is it C, a teacher who is pretending to speak Finnish? Mm. Is it a beggar who is pretending to be in shipwrecked? Is it a doctor who is pretending to be deaf? Or a teacher who is pretending to be Finnish? <laughs> what? They all seem quite unlikely. They really do. Um, I'm not going to say which one seems more or less unlikely because I don't want to sway anyone's judgment, but I just think that, what a great three. What a great three, the big three. These three actually do describe me, Jack and Annabelle. Um, you can decide <laughs> who's who. Yeah. Um, question number three. Roticism, roticism. Is it smiling too much during conversation? Is it moving your ears without touching them? Or is it excessive use of the letter R? Sm is it roticism, smiling too much during conversation? Is it moving your ears without touching them? Or is it excessive use of the letter R? Hmm. Tricky stuff. Great round here from Annabelle. 
This is great. I like the background as well. That was me. Oh, credit where credit's oh. due, but you know, also don't no extra credit. I really like the watermark in the background as well. Oh no, I was Annabelle. <laughs> 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 I didn't notice the water mark. Oh, um, fine. question number four. Defenestration, <gasps> a quiz classic. Defenestration. Uh, is it releasing stress by screaming? Is it vomiting in public? Or is it throwing someone out of a window? Is it releasing stress by screaming, vomiting in public, or throwing someone out of a window? This word reminds me of a very beloved pastime that we used to do on a Wednesday night. When we used to vomit in public. <laughs> we used to vomit in public. <laughs> After after Wednesday Night Lloyd's, yeah. Um, do you remember this? Do you know what I'm referring to, Hugo? I do. When we used to throw someone out of a window, or or when we used to release stress by screaming. Yeah, he does. He knows what I'm talking about. Um, question number five. Yerd. Yerd. What is yerd? Is it a language native to Central Asia? Is it to beat an object with a stick? Or is it the mating dance of butterflies? Yerd is yerd. I, I can't. I mean, it doesn't sound like a real word anyway. But when I say <laughs> it, the more I say it, the less real it sounds. Yerd is it a language na- native to Central Asia? Is it a to beat an object with a stick, or is it the mating dance of butterflies? I mean, it could honestly be any of those, in my opinion. But mm. that's because I'm quite, you know, uninitiated when it comes to yerds. You know, um, oh, come on. I can't, I can come up with a pun. Hang on. Ah, uh, oh, I wouldn't touch it with a, with a, no, that's a barge pole, but not a, not a yard pole. Uh, hey, a on. yardstick. Uh, what about a yardstick? I, I wouldn't touch it with a yardstick. There we go. Great. That's Brilliant. great. Seamless. Question number six. Uh, we'll, we'll smooth that out in the edit. Um, Rodakin, Rodakin is a Rodakin. Is it the fourth stomach of a cow? Is it an acting technique? Or is it to enter someone's chamber before they're properly attired? Is it the fourth stomach of a cow? Is it an acting technique? Undefined. Or is it to enter someone's chamber before they're properly attired? Mm. Mm. Well, you shouldn't do any of these things. No, I completely agree with that. It's always a great in these things where you actually know the definition of the word. Do you know this one? Yeah. No, I've no idea what this one is. <laughs> but you imagine. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Um, question number seven. Lingible. Lingible. Is it a word which is easily translatable? Is it an object which is meant to be licked? Or is it something which could stay for a long time? Lingible. Is lingible a word which is easily translatable? Is it an object which is meant to be licked? Or is it something which could stay for a long time? Mm. Um, One moment. Oh. No? You haven't muted yourself, by the way. No, I did mute myself, but it's not. Oh, I see. I've had that recently as well. Right, question number eight. Oh, nudistrati. Nudistertion. Nudistertion. Is it a man who is easily easily scandalised? Is it a political persuasion relevant to the 18th century? Or is it the day before yesterday? New distortion, or however it's pronounced. Is it a man who is easily scandalised? Is it a political persuasion relevant to the, to the 18th century? Or is it the day before yesterday? Mm. What could it be? Oh, I don't know. Hopefully, you know, though, if you if you're thinking, oh, I was reading that word in a book just this day. Then I'll I, help you a lot because I was I was reading this in the book the day before yesterday. What is that what you just said? Sorry. No, I said just this day. Oh, that's OK. Question number nine. Balbriggan, 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 Balbriggan. Is it complimenting someone on their breeches? Is it a type of cotton used in underwear? Or is it a pet frog kept by a soldier? What? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. 
<laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry, that was ridiculous. Is it complimenting someone on their breeches? Is it a type of cotton used in underwear? Or is it a pet frog <laughs> kept by a soldier? <laughs> that sounds lovely. I'd like a bow if it's a pet frog. Pet frog kept by a soldier. I really enjoyed that. It's brilliant. <laughs> Thank you, Annabelle. And, oh, right Annabelle, on. let's not forget, did come up with all the ones that aren't true, which I think is no, yeah, no means Yeah, very impressive. Um, and of course, not of course, just question number 10 anyway. Question number 10, here it comes. It's Cornobble, Cornobble. That's where I live. Um, is it to beat someone with a fish? Is it to steal several bags of corn? Or is it to fall down a hill head first? Cornobble, is it to beat someone with a fish? Is it to steal several bags of corn? Or is it to fall down a hill head first? I like how they're all the same length, those phrases. That is very nice. And they all start with two. Mm, it's very lovely. symmetrical. Great. I'm glad we agree on that. Um, so there we go. That's the round two, That's I guess. Round two again. So we had hobbledy hoy. Is it a dance? Is it a clumsy youth? Or is it to fall in a ditch? Question number two. Whipjack. Is it a beggar who's pretending to be shipwrecked? A, do a doctor who's pretending to be deaf? Or a teacher who's pretending to be Finnish, to speak Finnish. Question number three. Is it smiling too much during a conversation? Is it eroticism? Is it moving your ears without touching them? Or is it excessive use of the letter R? Question four. Defenestration. Is it releasing stress by screaming, vomiting in public, or throwing someone out of a window? Yerd. Um, wouldn't touch that with a yerd stick. Uh, <laughs> a language native to Central Asia. Is it to beat someone with a with a stick? Beat an object with a stick, rather. Or is it the mating dance of butterflies? Question number six. Rodakin. Is it a full stomach of cow, an acting technique, or to enter someone's chamber before they're probably tired? Question number seven. Is lingible a word which is easily translatable? An object which is meant to be licked? Or is it something that could stay for a long time? Question number nine. Nudestration. Is it a man who's easily scandalized? A political suasion in the 18th century or the day before yesterday? Bolbrigan, is it complimenting someone on the breeches, a type of cotton used in underwear, or a pet frog kept by soldiers? And Cornobble, is it to beat someone with a fish, to steal several bags of corn, or to fall down a hill head first? Boom, that's that round out of the way. Nicely done. I mean, just bear in mind that a chimpanzee would have got 3.3 .3 on that round, probably. <laughs> so I hope you've got more than that. How have um, you got more than a chimpanzee? Our next round is brought to us by Charlotte Hunter. Thank you very much, Charlotte. It is, of course, right face, right rhyme. <laughs> right face, it? right like, rhyme. That's very exciting. Do you like it? It's like right place, right time. Love it. So what we're going to show you, we're uh, going to show you, um, there's 10 questions. Each of them have two pictures. One of them has got people in it or a person in it, and the other one has another picture. In e each of the cases, we would like both words. Each of them rhyme with each other. For example, if it was a picture of Jack and then a picture of a backpack, then, the, uh, then you'd write down Jack and backpack. So we want both words in each case, no half points. Do we have half points? Mm, no. No, no half points. Okay. Here's the first question. They both rhyme with each other. We'd like what both things are. Question number one. <laughs> so, so, yep, have a look at this. You've got a uh, something that is brown on the left-hand mm -hmm. side. Nice. A brown object of some kind. And on the right-hand side, you have a, a scene of some kind with a beige to white background and four slash five slash six objects in the foreground. Slash seven, That's actually. Brilliant, brilliant work not giving anything away in your descriptions. So what's this? So we want you Thank to you. name what both of these things are. And they both rhyme, is the clue. They both rhyme with each other. Yep. So both for the point. Okay, question number two. Okay, so what you have here is um, somebody doing something on the left-hand side and uh, kind of a, a blue mottled uh, rectangle, rectangular thing on the right-hand side. So there we go. That's a look. That's a, look at that edit on the on the picture on the right. It's very nicely done. I assume that the the, the bottom of whatever that is has been taken and. I think it top. might have been, but still. No, I mean I'm saying I think it's very impressive. Um, also, I think Charlotte has the same kind of background every single time that she rides around. Now it varies, but so, to be fair, it's come. It's, it's tough to come up with a background for for something yeah. rhymes. Oh yeah, definitely. No, it's good. 
Question number three. Question number three. <laughs> well, this is a. Um, yep. There are. This is a, a herd or sort of some kind of animals on the right hand side. And Did you can you call that a herd? Left hand. <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it called a, an uh, embarrassment? Multiple, multiple, multiple living creatures on the right hand side, and a singular living creature on the left hand side. So, so Jack, answer this one in your head. I just find it quite funny. <laughs> yeah, it's quite good. <laughs> um, yeah, so in each so case, we want both the things. Yeah. We want the name of the person, and we want the name of the picture. What the picture is showing. They will rhyme good with stuff. each other. That is quite integral to this round, potentially. Mm. That's why it's called the right face, right rhyme. <laughs> exactly, Hugo. Right, question, question number four. <laughs> um, hang on. I mean, this, this is great. Uh, there's oh, a person on the left. Things. Yeah. Okay, person on the left. There are two, three, three circles on the right. Well, one of the middle circle is, is actually encased with a larger circle. And there's another uh, circle. And, there actually, and there are tiny circles. There are actually too many circles to name. There are a lot of circles in the right one, and there are no circles in the left one. There, yeah, but there's quite a lot of wood. Wood. What? I mean, I don't know you mean brown objects, Hugo. Oh, sorry. Quite a lot of brown objects in that, that one on the left. Yeah, that's true. Right, here's the next one. Question numero five. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I don't need to say anything for this one. There is um, some something or someone with a pink tie. And there's also a picture of someone on the left. That doesn't hey! really work. That doesn't really work. <laughs> I think it works. It's fine. Um, one, no, I, I can't say that because you'll give away the answer. Um, question number six. Oh, wow. Some letters on the right and something that isn't letters on the left. Mm. And that's where they're going to go. What Hang on, let me try this one out. Reminder, we need the name and the word for the, for the whole point. No half points in this round. Oh, oh really the per hard. Perseverance rover has landed on Mars. Has it? Mm. Oh, great. Oh, Thank great. goodness for that. A bit of optimistic. Oh, I like how I BBC Breaking perseverance. Have you seen BBC Breaking News' uh, notification? I like how it's very um, conversational. Um, touchdown. Yeah, t um, touchdown exclamation mark. Question number seven while we're at it. <laughs> um, there's, a, there's a person on the left and um, three objects on the right. If that person had glasses on, they would look like you, Jack. <laughs> oh, I don't know what to say to that. Um, thank you. Um, I'll have you. I got the I got the news about the Perseverance rover um, from BBC News, and then a couple of minutes later from BBC Mundo in Spanish. <laughs> Which one do you prefer? I like. Um, it's always a bit more flavorful in Spanish. I feel. <laughs> I like that a lot. Right, question number eight. Right, I like this one. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. I do, yeah. It took me a little while. I couldn't remember the person on the left's name. Um, apologies to our um South Sudanese uh viewers. Yeah, I'd say this is a very elegant map, but that's oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't know just Zaire. <laughs> yeah, I know. Wait. Um, when? This is not how the map currently looks, but anyway, we're after what the yellow region is. is, is called and it rhymes with the name of the person <laughs> there's no eritrea either eritrea has been swallowed up by ethiopia well it's a good time but anyway we're not interested in the words we're interested in the yellow region <laughs> i'm really enjoying this map uh give me a sec i'll be uh just gonna enjoy this map for a bit longer i think that's the only issue I think we've been thinking it's the only three issues. Eritrea, no South Sudan, and Zaire. 
Here we go. We've got that sorted. And now it's time for question number nine. Number nine. <laughs> Wow. What are these two images? We've got a person and we got some clothing of some kind. Hmm. It's got useful instruction on it. <laughs> yeah, directions on the picture on the right. It's that bop yeah. <laughs> Um so yeah, if you know this one, then that's great <laughs> for you because you're in prime to answer this question. Yeah, that'll mean uh, you'll get a, a point which will add towards your total score. Uh, for this week's quiz. Which we all want to see. Question number 10. Uh, question number 10. <laughs> These rhymes are so good. I'm really impressed with the... I wouldn't know how you'd necessarily go about writing this round. Well. It's very impressive. Thank, thank you to Charlotte, even more so then. Good round. We've had some good rounds today. We have, have indeed. It's only we're only three rounds in as well. Only only three rounds three rounds in already. I mean, obviously, round one wasn't that good, but the, the other ones were good. Round one was brilliant, Jack. Don't don't do yourself down. He knows it's brilliant. Anyway, let's go through, go through these again. So we have question number one. What are these two things? They rhyme. What are these two things? They also rhyme. What are these things? You never guess what that they rhyme. These ones also rhyme. I like how, you gonna, how are you going to do this by, by question 10? You're only on question four. What about these two things? I reckon they might have a, have names that rhyme with each other. Question number six. These two, um, if you write them out, not if you write them out, but if you say them, uh, they will um, audibly rhyme with one another. They will sound quite similar. Uh, these two, uh, if you write them down, they rhyme. These two rhyme as well. Uh, and also these two. I need a bit longer than those ones, sorry. And question oh. number 10. These ones as well. There we go. Good stuff. Rhyme. There we go. That was right. Right face. Right rhyme. Um, <laughs> love it. We love a pun. We know. do love a pun. Uh, uh, what's it called? We do love a pun. Team name actually. We so get famous puns. Famously love puns. Um, up next is our round on Nerf. Jack, why are we doing a round on Nerf? Well, we're doing a round on Nerf here because last week the team that we thought had the best team name got to request a specialist round for this week, which is a round on anything they'd want. So they can just give me any name and we write a round on it. And they asked for a round on Nerf last week. So here we are with a round on Nerf. Here it comes. Just Question number one. What sort of toy was the first Nerf product? What sort of toy was the first Nerf product? You got, I bet you thought um, at the start of this year you wouldn't have to write a round on Nerf. I knew it. I knew it. I was thinking, you know what topics might come up? I reckon we're going to have British hardwood trees. I reckon we're going to have Nerf. I reckon we're yep. going to have the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yep. We've got loads recently. Loads of great ones. Did we have one on Jigsaw a couple of weeks ago as well? <laughs> that was, a, that was a, t- a time and a half. <laughs> um, People already have their specialist rounds. They love them. So what sort of toy? What sort of general toy was it? We don't. You, you don't need to be specific. Like, was it... Uh, uh, was it a spoon? Was it a toy car? Was it uh, a firework? Was it a, a bat? You know, you don't need to be that specific with it. What sort of toy was it? Uh, number question two. number two. Which of these has not been a slogan of the Nerf brand? Um, Nerf, by the way, can be spelt in, in all capitals or lowercase, either way. Um which of these has not been a slogan of the Nerf brand? It can only be Nerf. B. It's Nerf or nothing. C. There's only one Nerf. D. Get real. Get Nerf. I'm, tr- I'm trying to do the sort of voice that would be on the CITV advert when I used to see them as a child. I feel like this round only on question two and I'm already getting big Marlish vibes. <laughs> So, which of these has not... All of the rest have. So, which of them has not been a slogan of the Nerf brand? It can only be Nerf. It's Nerf or nothing. There's only one Nerf. Get real. Get Nerf. Right. Next up, we have... um, Question number three. Um, In video game development, Nerf is a term that refers to the act of reducing the power of something. What four-letter term is used for the opposite? Increasing the power of something. 
So we've gone a little bit a little bit away from the brand now. Uh, oh, man, we're already on Crescent 3. Crescent 3. Um, in video game development, nerf is a term that refers to the act of reducing the power of something. What four letter term is used for the opposite? Increasing the, pa- increasing the power of something. So, for example, Warsaw Commander is too powerful. It really needs to be nerfed. Oh, now it's too weak. I think we need to blank it. Not blank it. Blank it? I could do with a blanket. It doesn't get cold in Cornwall. Cornwall's very tropical. Yeah, it's so tropical. We're basically in the tropics. Question yeah. number four. Hasbro do not use gun to refer to their projectile shooting objects. What word do they sorry, <laughs> use instead? Hasbro do not use gun to refer to their projectile shooting, shooting objects. What word do they use instead? So they don't call it a Nerf gun. They call it a Nerf something else in the official branding. What? I'm looking for a certain kind of emoji. I'm struggling quite a lot. Okay, uh, yeah, I suppose. What for? Um, I'm going to put something in the chat. Okay, we've got a lively chat today, to be fair. Yeah, exactly. Um, question number five. Nerf, in 2013, introduced a line of guns targeted at the female demographic. What was the name of this line? And there's oh, a little picture God. to help you on the side. Nerf in 2013, it was discontinued in 2020. Introduced a line of guns targeted at the female demographic. What was the name of this line? And there's a little clue on the, th- on, um, the right there that it starts with an R. It starts with the letter R. Gosh. What do you think of that, that gun, Jack? I, I really strongly dislike it. That's it just feels like, oh, no. It's targeted at that, you can, you know, it's targeted at the female demographic. That's why it's so got depressing. some wings on it, I guess. And they obviously have to have sparkly bullets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, makes sense. No, it doesn't make sense at all. It's, yeah, I'm not a fan of it. Let's move on. Question number six. Which letter of the NATO phonetic alphabet precedes strike in the name of a, of a lower priced range of Nerf guns? Which letter, sorry, there's a few typos in this. Which letter of the NATO phonetic alphabet precedes strike in the name of lower priced, uh, a, a lower priced range of Nerf guns? If you were a water pistol emoji, where do you think you'd hide? Uh, I think I'd hide with the sports. That's what I thought, but oh, here we go. Found it. Uh, it's not there. Somewhere it's in the uh, in the light bulb the section. Oh, who'd have thought? I guess it's technology. I, I right. Guess. Question number seven. The Nerf brand also encompasses a line of infrared emitting light guns. What game slash sport are these used to play? The Nerf brand. The Nerf brand also encompasses a line of infrared emitting light guns. What game slash sport are these used to play? Wow. I couldn't tell you, Hugo. I couldn't tell you. I oh, know I think I might have a script that one. Potentially. Potentially. Okay, if I can go down. Yeah, it should be. Hang on. Honestly, the payoff would be so so worth all this build up. I can't wait, Jack, honestly. Get, keep your eye on the, on the live chat, everyone, because Jack's about to post some fire. Uh-huh. Um, question number eight. Nerf is also the name of a livestock animal in the Star Wars universe. Before it was destroyed by the Death Star, which planet could they be found on? <laughs> Nerf is also the name of a livestock animal, uh, animal in the Star Wars universe. Before it was destroyed by the Death Star, which planet could they be fi- found on? Oh, it's so annoying. It's incredibly hard to use. There we go. It's good because if people are watching the live chat. Oh, there it is. Oh, lovely. That's that's really worth the effort. Jack posted three pictures of water pistols. (laughs) That was worth the wait. Question number eight. Uh, Nine. 
The Fortnite times Nerf range is a collaboration between Hasbro and which video game development company? Fortnite <laughs> times Nerf, have got X Nerf, whatever, range is a collaboration between Hasbro and which video uh, game development company? I'm already not a big fan of the fact that that's a, that's a collaboration that exists. There's also a Halo one. Uh, yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. I think you'll like the next question, though, so I hope that okay. helps. I'm very excited to see it. Right, so we have this one, which is a video game development company. Perhaps there's a, a clue in the rest of the question. And question number 10. According to the website, Nerf Super Circus can provide a deluge of splash-tastic fun. <laughs> Another place where you can find this is, of course, Splashdown <laughs> Water Park in Poole, Dorset. This is located a mere 40 miles from which famous Neolithic monument? What? Did not see that one coming, Hugo. Don't know about that. Uh, according to the website, Nerf Super Circus can provide a deluge of splashtastic fun. Another place where you can find this, of course, is Splashdown Water Park in Poole, Dorset. This is located a mere 40 miles from which famous Neolithic monument? Right, and we're going to run through those again, in case you missed them. So, question number one, what sort of toy was the first Nerf product when Nerf was created in, what was it, in the think, late 60s? I what I thought it would have been. Maybe, maybe later than that. Question number two, which of these has not been a slogan of the Nerf brand? It can only be Nerf. It's Nerf or nothing. There's only one Nerf. Get real. Get Nerf. I'm available. Please contact my voice acting agent. <laughs> uh, Jack uh, yep. Question number three. Uh, what's the opposite of nerf in video game development? When you increase the power of something, what's that called? Four letter term. Question number four. Uh, what, they don't say gun and the nerf company. What do they call them? Nerf blank. What do they call them? Um, what is the name of this line of, um, gu of nerf guns targeted at the female demographic? It begins with the letter R. Uh, you can have, have an educated guess at that one. Question number uh, six. What letter of the native finished alphabet precedes strike in the name of a lower priced range of Nerf guns? Um, question number seven. The Nerf brand also encompasses a line of which infrared emitting light guns? No, of infrared emitting light guns. What game slash sport are they used to play? Question number eight. Um, on which planet could you find Nerfs before it was destroyed by the Death Star? Um, uh, which development company alongside Hasbro uh, created the Fortnite times Nerf range, and uh, Splashdown Water Park is located a mere forty miles from which famous Neolithic monument. Mm -hmm. Boom! There there's we go. One, there's only one round to go. Where and has that it round gone? Can only be the wipeout. Oh, the, what is this, uh, Jack? How does the wipeout work? Uh, the wipeout works here as follows. So we're going to send, show you 10 general knowledge questions uh, and they will be just random questions uh, of general knowledge type. However, one big twist for this round is that if you put down a wrong answer, just a single wrong answer, that's zero points for the whole round. We want to see if you only put an answer once, it has to be right. You have to be very confident in your answers. You can choose not to put down an answer at all and that's fine. But if you put down an answer and it's wrong, that's zero points for the whole round. So off we pop, on with question number one. Okay. Yeah. Question number one, which classic cartoon character is known in Spain as Pedro Picapiedra? Nice. Picapiedra. Uh, which classic cartoon character is known in Spain as Pedro Picapiedra? Um, I found this out from watching classic Spanish game show, Saber y Ganar. What are your favourites? You watch it a lot. From what I've heard on the great um, This in the background is a program called, uh, is a film called Let's Get Squirrely. Well, it's got a person that I recognize the name of. John. Will Forte. It's got John Cleese in it. Oh my God. Who's John Lucreziano? He is also um, in another animated film, which we won't mention. Just oh, that's right. He plays. Um, where am I? Am I not saying? Don't say. We'll see. We'll see if you can say. Um, question number two. Uh, which city on the river Ribble became England's 50th city on the 50th year of Queen Elizabeth II's reign? So, which city on the river on the river what 
on the River Ribble, that was very difficult to say, became England's 50th city on the 50th year of Queen Elizabeth's second reign. River Ribble, what a good name. I've not heard of the River Ribble. Do you know about the River Ribble, Jack? Uh, I Yes, because the famous um, Ribblehead Viaduct in Yorkshire. The uh, of course. Well, don't say, that's a bit of a giveaway. Oh, I actually thought it was. Well, I'm sure there's there. lots of places called the Ribblehead. <laughs> Across Ooh. the country, across England. Across England. Um, question number three. Uh, the term Cool Britannia is a term you, sometimes used to describe the increased national pride of British cultural es- exports that occurred in which decade? The term Cool Britannia is a term sometimes used to describe the increased national pride for British cultural expo- exports that occurred in which decade? A reminder, if you, if you write down an answer and it's wrong, then you will get zero points for the entire round. But don't worry, well, if, you, if you lose confidence later, you can cross it out before we go through the answers. As long as it's crossed yep. out before we go through the answers. Yep. 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 I'm surprised there's not much about this um, film on Wikipedia. This is very surprising indeed. When did it come out? Um, like 2011 or something? I don't know. 2010, maybe. Question number four. Question number four. Which nation is currently fifth in the Six Nations table? Which nation is currently fifth in the Six Nations table? Well, I don't know. I, have you been following the Six Nations recently, Hugo? Not a big rugby fan. No. I will say. Um, it, let's guess Growly isn't even on um, IMDb. Uh, it's because it's called Get Squirrely. Uh, I'll be it. Also distributed as Acorns, Operation Crackdown, and uh, Vol Auf yeah. die Nuss. A squirrel plots to pull off a major heist in a giant nut factory. <laughs> right, question number five. Um, what colour is the centre of an official World Archery Federation target? What colour is the centre of an official World Archery Federation target? Um, well, it is really a, a big. So the the plot according to Wikipedia is uh, Frankie, a smooth talking squirrel, finds out that acorns are being stolen by the evil Acorns Corporation. Now he must assemble a ragtag team of forest animals with only three days to pull off their biggest heist yet. I've got a feeling. Wait, hang on. Wait, what was the what Frankie? What how did was Frankie described? A smooth talking squirrel. I thought he might be smooth talking based on the image in the bottom left because he looks like they gave him that outfit so that he'd seem smooth talking. Uh, like question number six. Uh, name two of the core five members of the Rat Pack of the 1960s. I may he be inspired look- by his outfit. <laughs> <laughs> that was going to say. Uh, name two of the core five members of the Rat Pack of the 1960s. It's a very good thing that I wasn't about to say what I was going to say because. Um, Yes, got to got to be in your toes here. It's only got three point seven on IMDb. This film quite impressive because most IMDb things don't go that low. Uh, user review: What the hell did I just watch? <laughs> I purchased this as a Christmas gift for my younger sister, and I regret it one hundred percent. I don't understand why John Cleese makes movies like this. The quality is absurd. It made my eyes hurt. The ground looks the ground looks like a computer wallpaper that the animators just slapped on there. The mouths of the characters didn't line up very well. The bear at the end looked like Kung Fu Panda as a drug addict. <laughs> he really let himself go. Okay, question question number seven, I guess. Who wrote the curious incident of the dog in the nighttime? Who wrote the curious incident of the dog in the nighttime? Um Storyline was junk, had no point really. Also, in the city, there's way too many crosswalks. Also, couldn't understand a damn thing the rat and the frog were saying. I do not recommend this piece of trash. <laughs> I mean, he's just made, John Cleese has just made a lot of really sketchy, like 3D animated films that he's provided his voice for. Um, yeah, true. Active agent, I guess. Question number eight. Question number eight. In, in Ice Age 3, Dawn of the Dinosaurs, what species is Buck? In Ice Age 3, Dawn of the Dinosaurs, what species is Buck? Um, I've been watching uh, something called Call My Agent recently, Hugo. 
It's the French. Uh, ah, yes. It's I'm really good. big in the French programs that are bigger than Lupin as well. Yes, I've seen Lupin. Lupin's amazing. Would recommend for anyone. Um, would you like another one star review for, from for um, Get Squirrely? I would love another one star review, please, you. Uh, let's do the next question first. Question number nine. Question number nine. Which world capital city is first alphabetically? Which world capital city is first alphabetically? Oh, this, um, this is uh, Who Thought This Was a Good Idea by I Am a, a Bald Cupcake. They say, the squirrel and snake had boobs. Hmm. I, I low-key want to die after watching this. A typical <laughs> straight-to-DVD film found at the dollar store. Probably should find a different film to watch. I would rate this zero if possible. Oh, no. But it's from the producer of Shrek and may contain nuts. And the review that below that is 10 out of 10. Fun! <laughs> <laughs> when I first saw this movie about a year ago, I was not certain how much I liked it. It was nice and the story moved along well, but I was distracted by the animation. <laughs> I need to have a look at the clip for this, do you? Um, question number 10. Number 10, final question of the quiz. For how many beats is a dotted minim last? That's not a very good last question because it doesn't make sense grammatically. Sorry about that. Does. For how many beats does a dotted minim last? I, give that one I don't know if it makes a difference, but in 4-4 four, four time. In 4-4 four, four time. Get squirrely. Okay, let's have a look. Oh, geez, it's terrifying. Oh, it's awful. Also, oh, I don't know about this, Hugo. I wish you'd never talked to me about this because it's just really awful. So you, it looks like a brilliant film. Oh, there we go. Uh, I'm going to run through these questions again and then we'll end the quiz and we'll go through the answers. So question number one, which classic cartoon character is known in Spain as Pedro Pica Piedra? Question number one, which city on the River Ribble became England's 50th city on the 50th year of Queen Elizabeth II's reign? Question number three, Cool Britannia is used to refer to the increased national pride for British cultural exports in which decade? Question number four, what country is currently fifth in the Six Nations table? Question number five, what colour is the centre of an official uh, World Archery Federation target? So an archery target, what colour is in the centre? Uh, question number six, name two of the core five members of the Rat Pack. Question number seven, who wrote The Curators of the Dog in the Nighttime? Question number eight, in Ice Age 3, Dawn of the Dinosaurs, what species is Buck? Question number nine, which world capital is first alphabetically? And question number ten, for how many beats does a dotted minim at last? Excellent. Stop, okay, so here we go. So the pens answer. down. Pens down. That's, that's your last chance to answer questions. But however, pens back up because we're about to go through the answers. So, the answers. so for the first round, our links round. Uh, question number one, this was, of course, bait. Bait. Laura is called bait. Question number two, uh, Princess Aurora and are played by L. L. Hojak. L. Fanning. L. Fanning. Thank you. L. Question number three, rack. It's a rack, of course, the triangle thing. I was thinking like the, the thing you used to, that's something else. Um, Olympus Mon. It's called Olympus Mons. So we wanted Mon there. Olympus Mons. Um, glass. Is that meant glass? Girl, don't know if you got the link, by the way. Difficult one. Han. It was Han Dynasty. Bigger Dynasty. It might have been Han. Masala. No. Uh, <laughs> not Masala Chair. Sorry. I'm, I, I really did, should have proofread it more today. Masala Chai is what we're after. Chai. If you're not, uh, if you're not listening to this, the answer is Chai and not Chair. It's not called Masala Chair. I'm trying to ch chai, because some people don't put our audio on. Um, is this, of course, Back, back Street, is it? Uh, yeah, Back Silver Street. Back Silver Street. Back. Um, and Showtime is, of course, this program. And the link was, very cleverly done from Jack, is the first syllable of classical composers. Not classical composers, just composers. Um, but, but look at this. It was, so we had... Beethoven, Elgar, Rachmaninoff, Mon Monteverdi. Apparently, there's someone called Glass. Philip Glass. Philip Glass. Uh, Handel, Tchaikovsky. Obviously spelled differently, but that's fine. Uh, ba ba ba. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bit of a stretch. That one. 
and Chopin and Chopin. Nicely done if you got that. That was a hard thing. So they were the first syllable of classical composers, of classical style music composers. Or just, yeah. you're like, I mean, Philip Glass is, but yeah. So this or that. So Hobbity Hoy was B. Oh. It was awkward, awkward or clumsy youth. Hey, look at that Hobbity Hoy over there being so awkward and clumsy. Oh, God, a clumsy youth. Um, question number two. Uh, oh, sorry. One. <laughs> question number two was a, a, a beggar who claimed to be shipwrecked. It oh, of course. Really the other ones, to be fair. Yeah, I was thinking about this. I feel like the other ones were potentially too niche. But uh, there you go. Question three is excessively stressed. Oh, wow. I did not expect that one at all. It does also um, it does also mean other things. It is also the word for the speech impediment involving the letter R sometimes. But it okay. also means excessive use of the letter R. Oh, interesting. Uh, question number four is, of course, throwing someone out the window. A classic. Classic. An absolutely classic, that one. Question number five, a yard is to beat an object with a stick. I would not have got that. That's very impressive if you got that one. Uh, question number six, that's the fourth stomach of a cow. Uh, question number seven, uh, that is an object which is meant to be licked. Again, would not, I would have gone for the first one. So that's... Ling, like tongue. Of course, of course. Uh, question number eight, that is the day before yesterday. Wow, again, would never have guessed that one. Mm, she's for work. Uh, Balbriggan is a type of cotton used in underwear. That's disappointing. Okay. It really I is. I mean, we've never been that wrong. Um, that is to beat someone with a fish, Cornival. Cornival to beat someone. There with we a go. Fish. That was that round. So maybe um, write down how many you got for that round. Make it easier to add up at the end. Uh, right face, right rhyme. Jackie, I, I stole your first question, so you can read out these ones. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, okay. That's uh, Scooby Doo and Waterloo. Of course. Scooby Doo and Waterloo, performed by ABBA. That's the music video. Scooby Doo Waterloo. Then we had Amanda Gorman. From who uh, the youth poet laureate in America who performed at the Biden's inauguration and Book of Mormon. <laughs> so we had Amanda Gorman and the Book of Mormon. Well done if you got that. Uh, then we had my favorite Charles Dickens and chickens. <laughs> Charles Dickens and chickens. If you take up the like the middle of Charles Dickens' name, you do you are left with chickens. Yeah. Uh, then we had Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Ozone Layer. Oh, I see. I was trying to rhyme, but I was trying to like just rhyme Buffy, and I couldn't think of a rhyme for that. Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Ozone Layer. Then we had Matt Hancock and Bangkok. One's the capital of Thailand, and and the other's Matt Hancock. I that doesn't really mean anything. I don't. <laughs> I don't know. Um, question number six. This is Thor and seven hundred and seventy-four. We're not doing uh, half points. We need Thor, and we need exactly the number seven hundred and seventy-four. Good stuff. Wait, hang on. Are you saying that's not seven hundred seventy-four? What L? L is fifty, isn't it? I think it's about seven hundred ninety-four. Hang on, I'll do a Roman numeral translator. Let's have a little check we have... here. We'll accept 774, whatever happens. Yeah. We'll also accept... The... Okay, I'll have a look. So what is it? Uh, DCC. Okay. Uh, That's 700... It's 744, that number. 744. 744. So it's actually 744. I think I wrote that, that down wrong, actually. Uh, 744. Yeah. Sorry about that. Look, we know. Don't you tell us in the comments. We know. We realised. Um, <laughs> apparently, as a fun little tidbit, uh, my brother accidentally, rather than Waterloo, Scooby Doo, put Voulez Vu, Scooby Doo. Easy mistake to make. I mean, easy, definitely easy, easy mistake to make. Uh, this is Nick Pope and Isotope. Nick Pope and Isotope. Uh, this is Chris Kamara and <laughs> Sahara. Obviously, not all of this is the Sahara Desert, but these are a map of the countries that have some of the Sahara Desert in them. Um, this is Danny Harmer and Body Armor. <laughs> Danny Harmer, Body Armor, and of course, Blur and Schler. Amazing, Blur and Schler, classic. Um, Nerf, here comes our Nerf round. Okay, so question number one Nerf was uh, that's a ball, was the first Nerf product. It was, was a ball, ball. easy Crazy. as that. Uh, question number two the slogan is, of course, it can only be Nerf. I can't believe they actually had. There's only one nerf. <laughs> That's really yeah. Um, this is to uh, buff 
uh, buff is the opposite of nerf in uh, gaming lingo? Mm. Oh, I really think that the um, Warsaw Commander could do with a buff. <laughs> exactly. Blaster is the blasters. Blaster. They're not called nerf guns at all. They're called nerf blasters. Can you imagine? Of course. Of course. Question number five. The answer to this is re- oh god, <laughs> rebel. It's rebel. They're all done about that. Uh, question number six. Uh, alpha. Uh, you know, alpha, alpha strike, of course. It's not um, uh, kilo strike. <laughs> uh, laser tag is that. Laser tag. Light guns. Mm. Uh, but the Nerf brand of laser tag is co- still called laser tag, but laser is spelled L A Z A R. What? That's, that's horrendous. Question number eight. Uh, that is Alderaan. These where Nerf can be found on Alderaan. That's a hard one. Uh, question number nine. Epic Games. Obviously, with uh, only Fortnite. Cool. Uh, and question number ten. Stonehenge. It could not be any other thing other than Stonehenge. There you go. It had to be Stonehenge. And right, then okay. we had our wipeout round. The answer to which were P- Pedro Pica Piedra is, of course, Fred Flintstone. God, what? Because Pica Piedra, I think, is just Spanish for Pedro. Um, uh, no, it's not. It's Spanish for Flintstone. <laughs> and Pedro is a common Spanish name like Fred is. Uh, Barney Rubble, incidentally, is called Pablo Marmol, which means like Paul Marble. <laughs> Um, then we had this one, which is so we had Fred Flintstone, and then reminder if you get any of these wrong, that's zero for the entire round, I'm afraid, automatically. This is Preston. Preston. Wow, that's uh, this is the 1990s. Everyone was in a good mood because of Tony Blair and the Spice Girls and Oasis, apparently. Uh, fifth is currently Ireland. Ireland, a fifth and sixth nation table, just above, above Italy. Uh, the centre is yellow. It's the yellow centre of the World Archery Federation target. The Rat Pack, there were five members. We only want two of them. Two for the point, please. You need two of Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Sammy Davis Jr., Peter Lawford, and Joey Bishop. And Joey Bishop. I presume you won't have got either of the last two. Um, then we had question number seven. Jackie, getting the post ready? It's ready. It's good to go. Oh, amazing. Um, who wrote the Curious Instance of the Dog Night Time? That is, of course, Mark Haddon. Mark Haddon. Uh, Buck is, of course, Weasel. Uh, I remember when seeing this in the cinema, I I really love the moment where he pops up between a dinosaur's feet and says, Pop goes the Weasel. It's brilliant. <laughs> um, the first capital city alphabetically, we were what we were after was Abu Dhabi. Uh, we are not accepting Abuja because obviously D is before J in the alphabet. We will accept, however, Abidjan, which is arguably the economic capital of the Ivory Coast. But I, I feel like you haven't written Abidjan. But Abu Dhabi was what we were after. Um, and uh, Dotted Minim lasts for three beats. Lasts for three beats. Oh. I'm just tentatively looking towards the chat in case someone says this is wrong. Uh, but I'm pretty <laughs> sure it lasts for three beats. Um, excellent stuff. Good stuff. All right. Uh, I will make the post now. So three, two, one. That post is now should so be live. If you now add up your score quick as you can and go to the Facebook page Hildbead SRC, you'll find a post on that account and we would like you to comment below it your team name and also what your score is for this round and then we'll we'll announce the winners shortly. All right. It's and apparently we'll posting, but... This is going to be taking a while. I'm not sure why. Oh, there you go. It's posted, there you go. It's posted. So go now to post your score and your team name on that post, please. Sorry about the right. Roman numeral slip-up and some of the typos there. It was very sloppy from me there. That's fine. It's absolutely fine. Um, <laughs> Kieran apparently said, I would say Abidjan, but Yamasukro is the capital these days, I believe. But we are accepting Abidjan <laughs> if you wrote that, but that was risky. Um, good knowledge. Uh, now it's time for a uh, part of the show we like to call Are You Smart in a Social Sec? Where we oh, ask my. our beloved social secretary, Jack Rawdon, uh, for some, some, some answers to these questions. And if you at home get more than him, then you are officially smarter than the social sector if you get more right than him. And that, that's no mean feat because Jack 
by his own admittance, is the cleverest person in the entire world. It's not true. It's the complete opposite of true, in fact. You're the least... <laughs> well, maybe it was not too difficult then. Uh, today, um, uh, the Europa League started today, Jack. I'm sure you've been following. Oh, no. Um, so today, the theme is Europa. Okay. Okay, Jack. Hello. What is the football governing body in Europe called? Um, UEFA. UEFA. Oh, up to a confident start. Will this be his week? Question number two. What are the most recent English team to win the Men's Europa League? Liverpool. Liverpool. So we might be getting a little bit confused with the Champions League. Um, <laughs> question oh, number no. three. In Greek mythology, Europa is the mother of which king who had a famous um, link to an animal? King Minos. You think Minos? Okay. Question number four. Europa is a moon of which planet? Jupiter. Jupiter. This does sound like you're, because you're weak on your confidence level. And Europa Point is located in which overseas territory? Of what? The UK? Uh, yeah. Bermuda. He's saying Bermuda. Let's see how he did. Uh, it was UEFA. Well done. Yes. It was Liverpool. I'm afraid it was Chelsea. Oh, no, no, I would not have got that. Uh, King Minos. Yeah, Minos, indeed. Very well done. Minotaur Origins, obviously. Jupiter as well. That's three. Uh, the last one, I'm afraid, wasn't Bermuda. It was Gibraltar. Oh, I was it thinking was Gibraltar, well but. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's better than you've done in some, in some that time. Is better than so a long if time. If you yeah. got more at home, if you got you listening at home got more than three or the same as three, then you are smarter than the social sex. So very well done. But now it's time for us to have a, a little sneaky look at how people have been getting on. Had a look through. Oh, there's some clever ones. Very excited. Um. <laughs> we have got some good ones. Okay, I think we're ready to come up with the the um, team name. Uh, okay. Shall I read you out three and you can say which you like most? I yep, don't really like all of them. There's only four. Ready, Jack? Okay, good stuff. All right. Okay, so. Oh, there's another one. Okay, uh, there's five now, so I'll read out three. Okay. Um, uh, you can totally tell because they're weaselly different. <laughs> um, this is this is multiple levered level. Why do French people only eat one egg? Because uh, un earth is a nerf. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. And um, I like the reference to the. Uh, the former slogan of the uh, Nerf guns. Um, it can only be the Vern Barquiz. <laughs> can only be the Vern Ber Barquiz. It's true. Yeah, go on then. I, I do famously like puns, but for this time, I like a, a name check of the Vern Barquiz. That's so right. It can only be the Vern Barquiz. Because it can only be the Vern Barquiz at the end of the day. Well, uh, Team name winner. So I'm I'm asking you now if you've won that to comment below. Um, Who was that? That was. It can only be the Van Barquiz. That was course, the team captained by James Melbourne, the inimitable. Aha. Aha, aha. Uh, so they get to pick around for next week. Hopefully, we'll find all that is soon. I'll keep you posted. Um, some strong scores. Don't know why my voice was so high for that, but you know, that's okay. Um, okay, so I think we're ready to announce the winners, are we, Jack? Yes. So let's have a look. Let's have the results. So the winners with 34 points, not as high sometimes, 
is three is the name of the team and the name of the team shall be three. <laughs> Five right out. Oh, what? I don't know. Oh, five. What? I don't. I don't know. But well done, your team. You've won. Very well done. That's Tom's team. Um, you've won this prize, uh, which is w- one of the best we've had in a while. So uh, no one else look at this. Obviously, this is just for the winners. But here is your prize. Um, uh, three is the name of the team, and then team and the name, and the name of the team should be three. So it's a nice little story about some people enjoying the Van Bar quiz. So here it is. <laughs> uh, do you, can you do you mind voicing this person or voice the other person? Yeah, sure. Okay. Hi, Paul. Did you hear the Vern Barquiz is on? Yes, I am looking forward to it. Do you want to be on my team? Wow, I knew all the answers, but I wasn't expecting to, that to be the link. That was a hard wipeout round. I hope we don't lose all our points by having written down an incorrect answer. Hooray! We won the quiz and had a great time. That was so fun. I'm going to come again next week. There we go. Uh, wow. So, <laughs> you won that lovely little story there. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, we've got. We've just had news of what our team around next week is going to be. Uh, Jack's writing this one. Um, it is on Star Trek The Next Generation. Oh, my. Wow. Okay. Well, we'll have to, uh, have to bring out the, the big uh, guns. Don't worry. That. Don't let that turn you away if you don't know anything about Star Trek. We'll try and make sure there's some gimmies in there. Um, but there we go. That's been the Van Barquist. There Thank we you very go. much for watching. Uh, there's important Hilby Democracy coming soon. So yes. think about attending the, the Husts on Saturday. Yep. And get voting when the time is right. And also, if you are interested in a position on the exec and uh, you feel like applying, also that would be great to do on for the third round because obviously there's a, another round of elections next week. So this is going to be this election season. So if you feel like you want to give something back to the college, uh, and you like the, the thought of, of being on the exec, then please give it a think and give it an apply if you feel like you're up to it. There we go. Well, I think that's I think that's all for today, Hugo. I think so. Brilliant stuff. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Uh, and we'll see you next week. I hope you have a good see week you. and stay safe.